hello everyone welcome back to my channel today i am going to be doing another diy lock jewelry tutorial um i did one previously and i got a lot of really good feedback on it so i wanted to come and do another one but this one is slightly different if you haven't seen that video i'm going to link it somewhere on the screen for you so you can go over and check it out but that was a simple lock coil style DIY and yeah so you can go check that one out and see what you think but for this one I'm gonna be doing excuse me I have to get my other tool I'm gonna be doing um, a slightly different basically um, twist on it this is my little ugly tool case <laughs> holds on my stuff i'm gonna be doing a slightly different uh twist on it so if you'd like to see how i make this lock jewelry please stay tuned okay so the last lock jewelry i did was with the coil it was a simple coil and it didn't have any embellishments on it so this one i have my little bead kits here i have some natural stones in here some bones some shell glass beads anything you can imagine and so I wanted to make a couple of different styles for you so you can see how to make an embellished lock jewel now I call them lock jewels I have locks I wear them on my locks however before I had locks I wore them on my braids my twists so it's really hair jewelry you can find a way to incorporate it into your hair whether you have locks or not so let's go ahead and jump right into it I think I want to do I have a little turquoise piece here it's shaped you can see that like a little teardrop so i want to use that and let's see i have a little carved bone piece as well i want to do one with that maybe i'll do three for you guys just to show you technique wise let's get a natural stone out here and this is a lapis lazuli <laughs> i know i'm saying it wrong but i think it's the la, la piece i think it's what it is but it's, this is a natural stone um and it is a deep blue color so we're gonna do use those three that sounds good so let's move this to the side so these are the tools that i have i got this as a set there um i'll show you just for reference there are a few other i have my little toolkit off camera because it is a mess i need to clean it out but I have these as well. This all came, I think that's it, and this one. These all came in a set together at Michael's. And it's basically for this, like wires, working with wire to do jewelry making. So these all came together. I mainly use these three, but um, I use those sometimes too. They had a little spring in them. And it kept popping out. That's my only thing about this. So now I have one spring. You can see in there. See that little spring back there by my thumb? That makes it bounce like that. All the other ones fell out. So I just swapped that one spring back and forth. But anyway, I guess that's a little review on this kit. It was very inexpensive. But I would say that that's like the only negative. Because without the spring, it doesn't work like you need it to. So anyhow... I swapped the spring back and forth. You don't need this one. Let's put this back. Although this is for, um, this can come into play with these two because sometimes I have a bead, not the natural one. Um, well, yeah, sometimes it, I've, I've done it on a natural one before. But I take this um, pointed end. If you can see that pointed end on there. I take it and I put it up against the hole and the bead and you just spin, spin, spin. And this is like um, a file. And so it makes that hole bigger because sometimes you need just that extra space and you'll see what I mean. I haven't exactly paid attention to what size wire I have. So this may fit in there and it may not. We're going to see. This is 16 gauge wire. Now, I like to use heavier gauge wire because I feel like it makes it sturdier. But you can use whatever wire you want. I have thinner wire too that I use for other projects or if I'm doing something like two-toned or something. But in general, I like a stiffer wire. But as I said, you can use whichever one you want. And if you have like smaller 
locks or finer hair. You don't want a lot of weight on it. So in that case, you want to use a lighter wire. I just like the longevity of the thicker wire. So here we see I cut a piece of the wire. I like to, just like I showed in my last video, do a couple pulls to work hard in the wire, is what they call it. Give it a little stiffness, makes it more sturdy. And then I like to file the ends. This is a file here. I actually want to get, want to like upgrade for my Etsy shop. I do sell these on my Etsy shop as well. I'll link that for you guys too. You can check it out. I do custom orders and custom sizing and things like that. But anyway, I want to get, there's like an electric one that spins and spins and spins. I'd rather get that one because I think it probably would be faster. But for now, this is how I do it. I just sit here and file and file and file by hand. You want it to be smooth. How I check it is I usually drag it across the back of my hand. I don't know if you can see that, but if it makes a scratch like it did right there, I need to keep going because it's not smooth enough. So for the purposes of this video, I'm not going to file it as long as I would because I'm not selling this to, these to anyone. This is just for um, an example for you all, so it's okay. But when I'm making my orders, I make sure I file it down very smooth because it is going in here. You don't want it to snag because that would not be good. So you're going to file, file, file like that until you get a smooth surface and you'll feel the difference. And then you have your piece of, of wire. Now you're going to need something to wrap it around. This is just a wooden dowel. I had this. I got a custom order for some um, micro. She had like extra small to micro locks. So she gave me the measurements and I went to the store and this was, I think it's like four, four and a half millimeters or something like that. So anyhow, I'm going to use this one because this is what I have on hand. But you're going to want to measure the thickness of your lock or compare it to something. It's so like some people have locks the size of a pencil. Think of like a Sharpie marker, like a permanent marker or something like that. You can see the, um, the end on here. You can even see that thickness of that compared to this. So you just want to find something, especially if you're just at home making these for yourself and you don't want to get a whole bunch of tools and stuff. Find something that represents the size of your lock and that's what you're going to use to create the coil. So we have that. Now since we are working with, let's start with this one because I know it'll fit through that hole. We're working with an embellishment. This is the teardrop turquoise bead that I showed you. So what I do, take the wire and feed it through and then decide where you want it to go. So for this purpose, let's call this a, hmm, let's make this one a double wrap. So just going to work it. Sometimes you have to twist it because you're going to have, the wire is not going to be perfectly straight. So you're going to have like a little twist or a bend. So you want to just feed it in. So then we'll have it in the middle for this style that I'm about to show you. So you can see that you have it on the wire. All we did was pass the wire through the hole. Simple. So now you want to hold whatever your embellishment is, bead, shell, whatever has a hole that you can fit the size wire you have through, you can put it on a coil and wear it in your hair. So we're going to go ahead and bend this upward like so. Okay. And then you can see right here that we have, put it down a table, that'd be easier to see. We have the two pieces of the wire and we have the stone in the middle and that's where it's bent. Okay. So then what I like to do is take the dowel, in this case, pencil marker, whatever it is that you're using and place the bead or whatever it is flush up against like that. You see what I'm saying? So you have that right here. You need to have a place where you can hold it fairly steady so that you can do what you need to do. Now, since this one I folded up, this is going to be a double wrap. So I move one out the way, okay? Take this and start wrapping. I wrap each of them in opposite directions. So I'm going to show you that. But let me take a step back. I don't like the ends to just be straight like this. If you file them well enough, yes, you can just leave them straight. However, I don't prefer the look of them straight. So you're going to take your round nose pliers. That's this one right here. Can you see that? I hope you guys can see. 
take the round nose plier, put it on the end of your wire, clamp it closed, and then you're just going to turn just like that. And that gives you, let me bring that in for you guys, that gives you that little loop right there. You see that little loop? So let me do this up close so you can see. Clamp it close to the end. The further down that you go, like if you were to go down here, that would be a bigger, the bigger the loop. So go ahead, turn, turn, turn. And now you have the two loops on the end so that the wire is not just straight, okay? So back to our dowel. Move the one out the way. And then I'm gonna start wrapping. It's important to move this one out of the way so that I can get around. And I'm just gonna take it. And I'm just gonna wrap it. And I'm gonna wrap it. This one I'm doing more spread out. If you want a tighter coil, when you wrap around, just wrap it around very close, like right on top of each other. Which maybe for one of the other beads, I'll show you that as well. I'm gonna wrap, wrap, wrap. And then it's gonna stick out here. You can see right here, this is gonna stick out like this, but that's okay because I'm gonna show you what to do for that. So now you should look like this. You have one piece wrapped around. You have uh, one coil right here wrapped around one piece and the other piece we, we push to the side is there. Now you're gonna wrap this as well. You're gonna wrap it in the opposite direction. So this one I wrapped counterclockwise. So this one I'm gonna do clockwise. And you're going to get a doubled up effect, and that's what you want. I like to be very freeform and organic with mine, so no rhyme or reason. Just wrap it till you like how it looks. And there you have it. You have that right there with your two pieces sticking out. Now, if you wanted, you can just use your hand, or you can use... The flat nose pliers right here, and you want to just push that down. So you see how that piece is sticking out, and now that piece is flat. You want them both to be flat. So you're going to take that, either with your hand, take that flat plier, and smush it down. It's okay if you smush a little too hard, because you can put it back into place. And I want you to see how you have those two loops. I feel like that just adds a nice finish to it. But again, you can skip that step if you want. And then slide it off of whatever you made it on. And voila, there you have a lock coil, dread bead, whatever you want to call it. And you have a nice embellished stone on the bottom. Okay, so I think I will show you